Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. We're into week three of the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year show and today I'm going to take you through how I created this portrait of famed photographer Rankin. Now if you're a regular viewer of the of the channel you'll know that in general I've been concentrating on animal paintings and landscape paintings and sometimes a little bit of both. But recently, the TV show Sky Portrait Artist of the Year inspired me to get back into my portrait painting. And it, I'm really glad that I did because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Because of the current lockdown situation, Sky are currently running a series of weekly shows. There are going to be four, I think. I think there's only going to be four episodes. Uh, and they're on every Sunday for four hours on Facebook Live. And you can watch a champion portrait artist depict a celebrity sitter, see their painting develop. But the cool thing is you can watch the live feed and join in at home with your own painting. And thousands of artists worldwide are doing so. And it's, it's been really good fun. So in week one, I did a video of my painting of Akram and the technique I used there was biro followed by watercolor followed by more biro or ballpoint pen. In week two, I painted Bernadine and there I used a pencil drawing and then went over that with interactive acrylic paint. So I did a different technique in week one, week two, and this week I want to show you a different technique again. This week I'm using conventional acrylic paint, but I'm also using acrylic paint marker. But perhaps more importantly, the way I tackle the creation of the structure of the face is very different to what I've done in the previous two weeks. So I'm going to try my best to show you a different technique for each of these episodes. So I'm starting out by doing uh, some quick sketches of Rankin and I'm actually using a combination of grey Sharpie marker pen and then just black Sharpie marker pen. But I want to show you how I created this uh, or this type of sketch because it's a slightly different technique to any I've shown on the channel before. So normally if I was doing a sketch of a person's face I would start off with some line work and that's obviously a conventional way to go. You kind of use the line to obviously describe the main features and the shape of the head and you know it can work really well and then typically you would add tone afterwards but what I'm doing here is just taking a very very loose and you know gestural approach with the, the light grey sharpie marker pen and you can see I'm working quite rapidly and quite fluidly and I'm really just putting in patches of shade patches of mid-tone wherever I should see shadow on Rankin's face. So for example in the eye sockets under the nose, perhaps on the side of the head and face like I'm doing now, I'm just very loosely squiggling that in, I guess for want of a better word, but then having done that I go to the black sharpie marker pen and I can pretty much ignore if I want to the shading I've done already because it'll kind of come out in the wash even if I didn't put those eye socket shadows in quite the right place it'll still read as a, as a realistic face because when I put the eyes on top, you, you know, it, it'll work out okay, certainly for a quick sketch. And I find it's a really freeing, uh, enjoyable way to work because the looseness that you can use in the initial stages when you put down the mid gray, because you don't have to be too precise, you know, it's just good fun. You don't have to, to concentrate too, too hard. Um, so, you know, final sketch out of three coming up. And this time what I'm doing, I'm holding the marker pen much more in the way I would if I had a big brush with paint on it. And you can see I'm using the side of the nib. So again, I'm going really loose, but I'm trying to push it even further this time and kind of block in the patches of shadow. So last time it was kind of gestural drawing. And, and this is still, you know, gestural drawing, still very loose, but I, I'm taking more of a painterly approach, even though I'm using a pen. So you can see I'm doing a little bit of kind of line work there to help describe his hair. But on the whole, I'm putting in these patches of mid-tone shadow. And then same again in with the black Sharpie marker to put the line work in. And one of the cool things is that when you've completed the sketches, sometimes the grey mid-tone will be outside of the lines that you, you put down. Sometimes it will be too far inside the lines and it creates a nice dynamic feel. There's a little sense of movement going on there, you know, which is appropriate because we're depicting a living person here. So, for example, you can see that ear on the right, 
the black lines miles away from the grey. But, you know, that's OK. Same with the shoulder lines. So there is the first sketch, head on shot, looking to the right and looking up to the sky. So that's the one I'm going to base my painting on. So this week I'm starting out with conventional acrylic paint. If you watch the channel regularly, you know that I'm a huge fan of interactive acrylic. Now, interactive acrylic, once touched dry, you can re-wet it with a spray, water spray, and then that allows you to blend it, let it dry again. You can repeat that process over and over. But traditional acrylic like I'm using today, no way you can do that. Once it's dry, completely waterproof. Now, that can be a disadvantage if you're trying to blend, but it can have advantages as well. And I'm going to try and exploit some of those advantages in today's video. So I'm starting out with titanium white, some fluorescent orange, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow and cad red. And I'm mixing up a mid-tone flesh colour from a lot of white, good bit of the orange, good bit of the yellow and just a touch of the blue and the red. So you can see I'm getting that going in the palette. Nice big flat synthetic brush, about an inch, inch and a half. Quick spray with the water bottle just to stop the paint in the palette drying out too quickly. And then I'm working bigger this week than I have in the previous two weeks. Uh, this is at least double the size um, of last week's portrait. And I'm just putting down that mid-tone on A2 mixed media paper. Now, the reason for putting the mid-tone on is it's a really good way to start a painting. It allows you to judge light and dark much better than if you just go on to pure white. Now, just like with the Sharpie sketches, I started off with the mid grey to pick out the shadows. I'm kind of doing the reverse here. I've added a lot more titanium white to the same colour that I used for the background. The background's completely dry. So this brings us on to one of the advantages of conventional acrylic. Dries super quick and once dry, completely waterproof. So that's really, that, that can be an advantage. So and I'm putting in just patchworks of light in the hair, on the forehead, the bridge of the nose, the chin. The cheeks, wherever I see them, and I'm going to move down to the shoulders now as well, wherever I see them using that same colour, it's just a lighter version of my flesh colour. And you can see it's almost like a, a face is starting to appear a little bit. Now, Rankin is obviously a well-renowned photographer, so I thought it was quite a nice technique to kind of parallel his life, because hopefully I'm going to slowly bring this face into focus in contrast to what I did last week for Bernadine, where... I kind of drew the face really quite carefully before I painted. So I've mixed up a darker colour now, more red, more of the blue, more of the orange into the flesh tone mix. And I, I did a similar treatment, adding shadows after the highlights. So it's similar to the Sharpie sketches, but a little different. Let all of that dry completely. And now I've switched to an acrylic paint marker. Now, these markers are really quite chunky. They've got a big 15 mil, 15 millimetre wide nib. So you can put down a great swathe of solid colour if you like. However, I prefer to use them in a slightly different way, tip, typically at least. I tend not to prime the nib too fully, and that allows the flow of acrylic paint to be somewhat limited. And then if you use the, the nib on the, on the smaller edge, as I'm doing now, you can still get really quite a precise line. Furthermore, if you put the broad surface of the nib down on the on the painting, as you'll see later, you can get some kind of dry brush type effects. And I actually did a video on this, these type of markers oh, a couple of years ago now, but I'll try to remember to put the link in the description below. Um, and so you can check that out if, if interested. But while I was chatting away there, what I'm doing is kind of doing the drawing phase on top of the tone, just like the Sharpie sketch. And I'm working with a light blue color so that when I go over again in a moment, I can correct if need be. But it's a really nice way to work. So use the nice light blue with the big marker. Now I've switched to a much smaller marker. Same type of deal. It's still an acrylic paint marker, but this is Prussian blue and this has got a four millimeter wide nib. So I can be a lot more precise here. And what I'm doing is starting with the eyes, trying to capture a likeness, looking at the, carefully at the corners, especially at the shape looking carefully at the shape of the eyes, especially at the corners. And then I'm going to work around the whole head again, disregarding, if necessary, the, blue, the light blue lines I've put down. I'm going to do the whole thing again. And that's going to bring kind of the drawing aspect of this painting in, into clearer focus. 
Now, you might think, well, why not use black for this stage? I tend not to, um, especially if I'm doing a portrait. The colours I use for, you know, say the flesh for Rankin here. You know, there's quite a bit of orange in it, as you saw before. And I feel the blue, if you're doing a deep shadow, if it's got some nice blue in it, then blue is obviously the complementary colour to orange. And I feel it, the, the two work, you know, in really nice harmony, basically. You can see when I started to depict the hair, I have treated that as a mass, kind of a sculpted mass. I've picked out a few key contour lines of the hair kind of wrapping up from the hairline over the top of his head. And for the beard, I've barely indicated it, just a little bit of a ragged edge to the jawline. So I don't know if you clocked it in the photos earlier, but if you check out the live feed, he is he has a beard, but it's very, very shortly trimmed. So it's really quite subtle depending on the light. So the drawing phase is complete. Now I still stick with my original brush. You know, it's quite a big synthetic brush, nice and wide. I don't want to get too fussy with this portrait. And I've mixed up another flesh tone, but this time it's a little pinkier. So a little bit more of the cadmium red. And I'm taking a little bit more care this time with the directions of my brush strokes. So you could think of this as if, what if I was going to model this guy's head out of clay. How would I, what if I was using a, a, you know, a tool similar in shape to the brush to cut away certain sections of his face, then you, you could imagine moving the brush in the same direction as what you would need to cut away. So a, in other words, along the line of the surface that you would reveal with your shaping tool. And you know, that's not a hard and fast rule. There are gonna be times when I don't do that with the brush, but in general, that's the way I'm thinking. I'm trying to follow the contours of his face. So even though yeah, this is a person, we still try to think of the, the, the thing we're trying to portray as a series of abstract shapes and surfaces and directions. Now I've switched to more of a purple shadow here to introduce some more subtle shadows to the situation. But having done that, I've mixed up a much deeper purple with the cadmium red and the ultramarine blue. However, I will have mixed that in with some of the flesh tone that I had right at the start of the painting so that it's not just a harsh, harsh purple. It's hopefully still a vibrant purple, but it's still got a hint of that original flesh tone in there. And I'm using that to begin to introduce some of the deeper shadows. Now, I'll typically work across the whole painting if I can. Rankin is wearing a blue t-shirt today. I don't care too much about that type of thing. You know, I mean, I'm not, you know, it depends on what I'm doing, but for example, I put purple on the collar there because I thought it would work quite well for the shadow against the color I've got in his face. So just because he's, we just because he's wearing a blue shirt, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to paint him wearing a blue shirt. And equally, you know, he doesn't have purple and blue hair. Um, like I say, I like to do my own thing a little bit, and I think that's part of the fun, really. Otherwise, you'd end up with all of these thousands of artists across the world taking part in the show, producing exactly the same version of, of, you know, of one guy. And hopefully what we want is lots of people's personal perceptions of the same of the same guy. And I feel that's what makes portraiture so interesting. Now, at this stage, I've switched to a light violet uh, acrylic paint marker. I can't remember the colour, but again, I'll put that in the description. All the materials are listed each week in the description of the videos. And I'm using the dry brush effect that I mentioned earlier to start to fill in some of the background. So I'm using this technique for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I don't want to overwhelm the painting of the guy with a with too strong a background colour. But at the same time, I want the person to, you know, be very distinct from from the background. So I'm happy for some of my original background coat of paint to show through those dry marker marks. But I do want, you know, definitely a contrast between the figure, the person and the background. And what I've been doing in the last few seconds as I'm chatting away is adding some of that colour to his face. So if I surround him with this colour, chances are some of the light is going to bounce off that colour and strike his face and therefore be reflected from his face and hair. So to keep a, a harmonious colour scheme, it's a good idea to incorporate some of that colour in the face. 
if you look back at the live feed on Facebook, so the, the, the live feeds are available even after the event. So, you know, if you haven't, if you've missed some of these Sky shows, check out the Facebook page and, you know, you can you can see the previous episodes. But he does have kind of a bluey light reflecting off of his face and beard at times. And I'm kind of changing that to this violet, this very light violet purple colour. And I've deliberately angled that background purple as well so that it's in contrast with the angle of his head. So now time for some lighter highlights. So I've mixed in much more of the titanium white than I've used at all so far and mixed up, uh, mixed that in with a little touch of the purple that I used earlier. So getting a very pale colour now and just beginning to introduce some highlights. So it's very much an iterative process. Now, you meant, I mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to make the T-shirt blue and I thought this purple highlight colour would work quite well for his T-shirt. So I'm applying that as a thin wash, just diluted with more water. And I know that those deep shadows I've put down already, they, they will show through. A lot more titanium white in the mix now and a lot more cadmium yellow to put on some of the brighter highlights of the face. So I mentioned right at the start of the painting section of this video that the interactive acrylics allow for easy blending. And yeah, that, that was quite a step forward in technology when they first uh, were introduced. I don't know when they first uh, were invented, but I came across them roughly 11 years, 11 or 12 years ago now. Uh, let me just stop chatting about that for a second. You can see when I'm working on the ear uh, and around the eyes and the mouth, I'm still using the big brush and just being more careful with the edge of that brush to get a reasonably controlled mark. But yeah, the interactive acrylics made a big difference. However, one of the advantages of the conventional acrylic is that it dries so quickly and gives such a nice hard edge that you end up with these very clearly defined shapes of colour and tone. And that creates quite a distinctive look for, for anything you paint if you use it in the right way. And so that's why I'm using that technique uh, for Rankin today. He's, you know, he's quite a strong presence. He's quite a, uh, a, you know, a bold character. And the other, the other thing I really liked about the screenshot I used was that when he was looking up, the overhead lighting in the room was reflecting very strongly into his eyes. And consequently, in the screenshot, at least, you couldn't really see his pupils. And I thought, well, you know, wow, I don't think I've ever painted a portrait where I didn't depict the pupils of the person. And I, th I found that uh, just a really interesting and intriguing idea. So I'm painted, I've painted in the irises and then I've put in these big patches of almost pure titanium white, these big highlights in, it, um, in the eyes there. A few more final details with a slightly smaller brush and then back in with the marker. So even at this late stage, I will make adjustments to the shape of the head if I feel it's necessary and if I can. And I felt he needed to just be a little broader in the jaw and, and the cheek line on the right hand side of the face there. So I came back in with that light violet marker and there was some reflected light under his jaw as well, which I'm just putting in now. So the conventional acrylic allows you to work rapidly and in a very bold way. And if you use it correctly, you know, you can be really expressive and get really interesting results. So there's the finished painting. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sunday Art Show. As always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.